So I keep thinking about the hours we all spent discussing the crazy moves we expected for the NBA's summer of 2019. Would KD really leave the Warriors? What was going to happen to Anthony Davis? The truth is, you could have given me exactly one million cracks at predicting how things would shake out, and I still wouldn't have gotten to. And of course, we'll see Dwight Howard back in a Lakers uniform. And yet, here we are, with Dwight indeed back wearing purple and gold. And just in case you wanted to go full-on hot tub time machine, last night we even got Snoop Dogg sitting courtside for the Lakers game yes. in San Antonio. <laughs> Can we take a moment, please, to appreciate Snoop going on the Lakers broadcast yes. for a little gin and juice play-by-play? -play? Listen to this. Oh, LeBron oh, yeah. just taking over the game Come on, Brian, Brian, walk that to the park. That's a walk in the park right there. We call that cake mix. We coasting right now, though. I like what we're doing right now. Let's keep the pressure on. Let's go. Push that. Push that, LBJ. Run that point. PG, get out there, Bradley. Get out there. Give it back to him. Oh, threes, please. Smooth <laughs> as ever. More. Now, at that point in the game, L.A. had a comfortable lead. But the Spurs hung tough, requiring a big fourth quarter from, yep, Dwight Howard. Dwight was a monster exactly when the Lakers needed it. Watch these dunks. The entire state of Texas shook on that one. And then here, Bradley misses, but Dwight flies in for the cleanup. Dwight was essential on the defensive end, too. Here's a key block on DeJounte Murray down the stretch. The Lakers really needed that one. And by the time it was over, L.A. had the win. It was their fifth in a row, while Dwight had 14 points, 13 rebounds. And this was his shot chart. Yep. A perfect 7 for 7, which means he is now shooting nearly 80% for the season. Of course, that's easier to do when you're only shooting four times a game, but it's still not easy, and I know this because no one else is doing it. Frankly, just as notable as how accurate Dwight has been is that he's getting his opportunities in the flow of the game, as opposed to demanding the kind of post touches that clogged up his other recent stops. It's almost as if the past five years never happened, Although, of course, they did. And acknowledging how poorly things went in Charlotte, in Atlanta, in Washington, D.C., is important because it makes the contrast to what's happening now even more remarkable. Remember what Wizards GM Tommy Shepard said after unloading Howard to the Grizzlies just a few months ago? He told our Adrian Wojnarowski, quote, that was the quickest trade I have ever done in my life. Memphis, too, was happy to get rid of Dwight via buyout, but that's what allowed Howard to step in for the Lakers after DeMarcus Cousins went down. At the time, he was saying all the right things about being willing to play his role, but since he'd said all that before and then hadn't followed through, it was hard to know whether to believe him. But now, well, now Howard is saying things like, quote, I don't see it as a role, I see it as my purpose. All those locker room cancer stories also seem to be a thing of the past. LeBron keeps talking about what a good teammate he is. And my God, Shaq is even praising Dwight on IG. <laughs> yep, here is Shaquille O'Neal actually referring to Dwight as Superman and writing, you playing great, bro. Keep it up. Proud of you. <laughs> I, I may need a minute. Um, this is all such a departure from our recent reality. It is fair to wonder whether it's sustainable. Will Dwight be able to do this for a full season? He turns 34 in a few weeks. Will he stay healthy enough to do it all season if, if he wants to? There are no guarantees, but at least for now, the Lakers are reaping the benefits. Dwight has the NBA's second best plus minus, fifth in the league in block shots, a key reason the team's overall defensive rating tops the NBA. He's also keeping the Lakers from having to overuse AD at center, which will be huge for them long term. All those hours talking about the moves that would matter this summer, and I guess the only sure thing is that there's no sure thing. And sometimes the least predictable stories are the best stories of all. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Janae, Dwight now has two double-doubles off the bench already. Is this sustainable? What do you see going forward? I absolutely think it's sustainable, and it's really interesting because we hear the Shaq comparisons, dominant, dominant post player wearing a Lakers uniform, and I think the compar comparison that most people make is the fact that like we judge Shaq for his work off the court, but also on the court as well. We merge those two worlds together, and I think we do the same with Dwight. How serious is he about basketball? You know, he's always been the showman. People compared him to Shaq and his personality, but now he has no choice but to have focus because he's on a non-guaranteed contract. That's one thing people.
people forget. How often do we say that a future Hall of Famer is on a non-guaranteed contract? And what people don't realize is that like he's been on five teams in five years. Mm -hmm. So what's the differentiating factor why he's having success? One, he's coming off the bench. And two, he's surrounded by veterans and proven winners, people that he is forced to respect. LeBron, even Rondo, championship pedigree, even Danny Green, ch a championship pedigree. So like, if you look at Dwight, he has no choice but to play that role. And I'm glad that he has a purpose because I think a lot of people have questioned his purpose based on his personality. And we get that history from Shaq Diggs. Right, and number three would be necessity is the mother of invention, right? And, and look, I think it's absolutely sustainable. I agree with Shanae in this sense. If Dwight Howard is okay, mm -hmm. getting four post-ups over a six game stretch, it's going to be fine. If my purpose, as he says, is I'm going to take ownership 20 minutes a night of one of the top-ranked defensive units in basketball. He has a 90 defensive rating right now. Uh, he's going to be just fine. I mean, this is always, he's always had the power to do this. Yep. I mean, and, and I agree with Shanae. I, I don't think it's a coincidence that the teammates in the, in the, in the surrounding principles. I think that's really is the really that's that's the point. Right. Is you know on a young Atlanta team, on a young Charlotte team, you know Kemba and, and pretty much yeah. you know a couple vets. But I mean this. Necessity is the mother of invention, and I do think people are a product of their environment. And the environment is, this almost reminds me, remember LeBron when J.R. Smith came yep. to yeah. town in Cleveland, and everybody said, well, how are you going to deal with a guy who's been, I've got this. He's right. on his best behavior. Right, LeBron's got this, right? And I think that, that does, it does have a way of persuading people to sort of accept their role. Yeah, absolutely. And remember, this is a three times in a row defensive player of the year. And the Lakers defense continuing to shine last night, keeping the Spurs under 40% shooting, blocking 10 shots, sitting atop the league in defensive rating this season. LeBron continuing to preach defense post game. Take a listen to him. I mean, defense is our, that's our staple. I mean, we've been talking about it and we believe it. No matter how it's going for us offensively, if we're struggling to shoot the ball, if we're struggling, you know, if we turn the ball over, whatever, you know, we have to still continue to get stops. And we did that tonight, um, you know, in a, in a very hostile environment, an environment that's very tough to win in. I know from experience, so um, it's, a, it's a very good, uh, good, good win for us early in the season. So Kevin Frank Vogel came in from day one of training camp preaching defense. We know that he had great defenses in Indiana. But we heard the Lakers preaching defense at the beginning of last season, and they just didn't have the personnel to do it. Are you surprised they've been able to pull it off this season with the changes in personnel they've had? Yes and no in this sense. I mean, I think that we all knew the margin for the Lakers this season would be, is this going to be a LeBron Cleveland era defense where, hey, pay no attention to what you're seeing during the regular <laughs> season because on April 12th we'll tune it up and, and we have the pieces? Or is this going to be a team that really actually takes advantage of some really good defensive personnel? Let us not forget, Anthony Davis is a top five individual versatile NBA defender. Danny Green is the best transition defender at guard, probably a top five of his position. Avery Bradley, analytics people will debate whether he's merely pretty good or great. Which side of the Avery Bradley but, camp hey, are you on? At the very least, he's pretty Pretty good. Yes. Um, Dwight Howard, as the floor mentioned, defensive player of the year multiple times. They have a rim protector on the floor at all times. And when LeBron James is engaged, he is as versatile and determined and as smart a defender as there is. So I think they've had the personnel to do this. The question was, are we going to make it a cornerstone of our identity or is it going to be wake us in April? Yeah, and specifically on the floor, the Lakers defense is better largely because they're bigger. Um, when you're bigger and you have those helicopters in the paint, as you listed the guys, AD, Dwight, um, even LeBron, JaVale McGee in there protecting the rim, they're better, which allows those guards to be more aggressive on ball on the perimeter. Um, the Lakers also have the number one pick and roll defense in the NBA. And why is that? That's because when your guards are more aggressive on the perimeter and you know the help sides behind you, you know you're straight. I think the question here was like, okay, from the get-go, will the Lakers actually make defense their identity? And it seems like that's the culture that they're creating. Well, there was a bunch of things that could have gone either way, right? So the Dwight Howard question, would he play ball offensively enough that you could keep him on the floor to use him the way you wanted to defensively? It's not just that he gets great blocks. We saw some highlights there. He's a smart defender. Yep. He knows where to be on the floor, and that he's been able to stay in the game and do that has been great for them. Avery Bradley, as you know, people argue over Avery Bradley as he's really good at some of his team defense stats, uh, would put him in. I think Avery Bradley is a fit guy, right? We've seen him in a great fit in Boston, not so great fit in a couple other places. He clearly is fitting in well with this team. LeBron, clearly, you can tell from those quotes there and some of the other things he said, he is relishing the fact that he is playing strong defense and showing people, he said, you're not going to be able to point me out on film. I do wonder with LeBron, is it smart for him to be playing such involved defense right now? 
What do you think, Kevin? Because he is turning 35 in December. They need him to be playing good defense in the playoffs. And I kept saying about him in these past couple of seasons, guys, you can't have it both ways. You can't have him want him to exert himself during the regular season and be disappointed if he doesn't have enough left in the tank for the spring. Do you think that he can keep this up all season and be who he wants to be in the playoffs? In, in this respect, I think there is a long spectrum between, hey, play every possession like your mark is smart mm -hmm. and be completely oblivious off the ball to the point of indifference, yeah. right? Like you can actually play a pretty good brand of defense if by merely being attentive and smart and kind of making decent cost-benefit analysis decisions <laughs> when you're off the ball. Exactly. And like he kind of hasn't really been doing that the last few by years. By having those helicopters. An alliance that the LA Times reports was forged two weeks ago in a secret meeting between the three superstars at LeBron's house. According to longtime Lakers beat writer Broderick Turner, Russ told LeBron and AD in that meeting he is okay playing off the ball to allow LeBron to initiate the offense, just as he did in Houston with James <coughs> And in return, LeBron and AD volunteered to shift positions if that's what turned out to be best for the team. James moving to power forward, Davis playing more often at center. It's an interesting peek into how the Lakers plan to adjust now that they have acquired one of the most unusual talents in the game. A relentlessly competitive triple-double machine, a leader off and on the court who is motivated to play well at home, but who is also playing on his fourth team in four seasons, in part due to his shooting issues. That last part seems of particular concern for the Lakers, who finished this past season ranked 25th in the league in three-pointers made per game. In fact, LA's lack of shooting was such an issue that when earlier in the day yesterday, the Lakers seemed to instead be working on a deal to acquire Buddy Heald from Sacramento, that was hailed as a smart move. After all, only Steph Curry sank more three-pointers last season than healed. The floor space he opens up is significant, or, well, it would have been for L.A. Instead, the Lakers chose to close the deal for Westbrook, which also prompted immediate questions about Bradley Beal's future in D.C. If Russ was jumping ship, was Beal next? Wizards GM Tommy Shepard has said absolutely not. And if you look closely at this trade, you certainly can see the threads with which Shepard intends to sew together a roster tailored around Beal. KCP is one of Brad's closer friends in the league. The trade also gave the Wizards more depth and the kind of cap flexibility that frankly seemed impossible just a year ago when Washington was facing three more years of John Wall's Supermax. Now, whether the plan works well enough to make Beal want to stay remains to be seen, as does whether the Russell Westbrook experiment works for the Lakers. All I know for sure is it was an absolute shocker, or as we call it in the NBA, just another day. <laughs> now to discuss a little bit more on this, we want to bring in our senior writer host of The Low Post, Zach Lowe. Zach, how do you think that Russ fits with AD and LeBron? So at the risk of making Mr. Measles, Moody, Madi mad at me up there, <laughs> I don't love this <laughs> for the Lakers. I would I would rather so I'm looking at an alternative where I could have Dennis Schroeder re-signed, Buddy Healed, keep KCP, maybe keep my pick. I'm probably doing that <laughs> instead of Russ because it helps my depth and the shooting problems are gonna be real. But look, the fact is we can talk about shooting and spacing and who's gonna take the last shot and all this. These guys are three great players and talent and smarts. And just all-out ferocity can sometimes make up for not-so-great spacing. And the West does not have an overwhelming favorite anymore that you look at and say, you know, that's a team that's, that's unbeatable. You know, Kawhi's injured, Jamal Murray's injured. So it's right there for the taking. They can still do it, but I don't love the fit. I would rather like that other fit with more shooting because here's one of the great axioms of LeBron's career. If LeBron is the best shooter on the floor, you haven't done a good enough job building around LeBron. Now, they'll get shooters. They'll probably bring back some of their own free agents. But the shooting is going to reach a critical level. And in the half court, this team's going to have to prove that it can score. But like, like Perk is going to say, Russ is a great player. They're going to figure a lot of it out. And to me, the question is not just the, the, the spacing. Because the Lakers have played in bad spacing before. It's the volume of shots Russ takes and the volume of bad long twos he takes. Is he really going to commit to playing off the ball? Is he really going to set screens and cut and all that and not just stand around the three-point arc? Because we've heard that song before and we haven't seen it play out in real time. The Lakers are going to be great either way because LeBron and AD are great. I just like that first iteration with Heald, Schroeder, KCP, etc. a little bit better than this one.
Well, well, can we take a moment right now and recognize Zach Lowe with the new haircut, the new look? I see you, Zach Lowe, with the little boots fade, man. The first thing man. RJ said real, to him also He got the amazing. little boots fade on himself, <laughs> looking real fresh right now. I just want to acknowledge you to that point first, Zach. But look, let me... <laughs> but listen, let me say this to you, okay? First of all, you might as well change, it, change the name, right? They're the Los Angeles... Jeffersons, okay, because they're <laughs> moving on up. Look, and Russell Westbrook was huge, and that makes them the favorite to come out of the Western Conference. And in my eyes, that makes them the favorite to win the title. We keep talking about Russell Westbrook and his shot making or shot taking thing that we just keep painting this narrative about him. But he's led the league in assists three times throughout his career. He led the league in assists last year when he was playing with a whole bunch of G League guys. One thing that we do notice is that Russell Westbrook hasn't played with a big like Anthony Davis. And if Anthony Davis can commit to playing the center position and him and Russell Westbrook is in a pick and roll, you better watch the hell out because you don't know how to stop it. Secondly, right, who did they just hire? One of our good friends, Fizdale. Mm -hmm. Where did Fizdale coach LeBron at? With the Miami Heat. And who was with the Miami Heat? D. Wade and LeBron James, are they both shooters? No, actually D. Wade shot like 33% from the three-point line. But they found ways, they found ways to figure it out by cutting, by going to the mid-post area, by going on the low block, deep seals, things to that nature. You can surround them with shooting. Guys like JJ Reddick is gonna be up in free agency. I'm pretty sure he'll take a call from LeBron James saying, hey JJ, we need you. Sure, LeBron, I'm on my way. I'm trying to win my championship. Don't you think Zach Lowe? And you 